Hi there. So by now I'm sure you've heard about the Perseid meteor shower that's going to be happening tomorrow, that's Saturday, August 12, 2023. And uh, I want to give you an idea of what you can expect to see and how to image the meteor shower if you're planning to do that. Now, if you live in a big city, you're probably not going to see much. You'll see an occasional meteor streaking by, but the light pollution really affects the meteors because a lot of them tend to be fairly faint. So if you can get out of the city to a dark site, I highly recommend that because that definitely improves your experience of uh, viewing the meteor shower. So if you are at a dark site, it should look pretty impressive this time because the moon is going to be very, very new. It'll be a very thin crescent, so it shouldn't interfere, unlike most of the time when the moon's actually pretty bright during the Perseid meteor shower. So if you are out of the city, you should see close to about 100 meteors per hour or uh, about, uh, you know, about two meteors per minute on average. Uh, so it should be a pretty good show and there should be a couple of meteors at least that'll be fairly bright. So I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, now I'm going to go over uh, what equipment you need, how to plan so you know where to look, and finally how to capture some images of, the, of this meteor shower. Pretty much any camera will do. Uh, what I'll be using is uh, this one over here. So this is my Canon 6D, and I'll be using the Samyang uh, 14 millimeter f 2.8 lens. So this is a completely manual lens. You could even use your phone if you have a fairly new phone uh, that does pretty well in low light. Although I do recommend using uh, an actual camera instead of a phone in this case. Uh, now for the lens, any lens will do. If you have a kit lens such as the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, you could use that as well. Just set it to the widest angle possible. So that's 15 millimeters for most of the kit lenses. Uh, so that'll work. Uh, although I do recommend anywhere between 12 to 16 millimeter lens is good um, uh, on most cameras for meteor imaging. Second, you will need a tripod. So I recommend a fairly sturdy tripod uh, and you will need an, in an intervalometer, which is that little hand timer that allows you to, to take pictures or to program your camera to take multiple pictures by itself. So you're not standing there hitting the button every time all night. And uh, lastly, and this one is optional, you will need a star tracking mount. If you already have one, that's great, use that. If you don't have a star tracking mount, that's fine, just use a regular stationary tripod. If this is the first time you're planning to use a star tracking mount, uh, I recommend not using it because struggling out there to do polar alignment or figure out how the mount works. Uh, while you're trying to capture meteors, it might be a bit tough. So I usually recommend uh, practicing that from home, from your driveway or, you know, on some night when the moon's up so you can figure things out and not waste a good night trying to figure out how to use a, a star tracker. Now, the part of the sky where the meteors appear to come from is called the radiant. And for this Perseid meteor shower, the radiant is going to be uh, near the head of the constellation of Perseus uh, and pretty close actually to the double cluster in Perseus. So if you see that as a little fuzzy patch underneath the constellation of Andromeda, which looks like a W or a three, uh, then that's where you'll be pointing your camera. For me in the Northern hemisphere near Calgary, Alberta, the, uh, the radiant uh, near the head of Perseus will be rising in the northeast for me. Uh, so I use a free software called Stellarium on my PC uh, to see what time to set up and to see which direction to look. So I recommend downloading that on your computer. I think it's also available for Mac. Uh, you can also get Stellarium on your phone if you have an Android or an iPhone, but I think you have to pay for that one. I don't think it's free on the phone. You can also use an app called Photo Pills if uh, uh, you want to use that on your phone, although I'll, that also has some, some price, so that's not a free app either. Uh, personally for me, I just use Stellarium on my computer and plan ahead and take some pictures of my screen for planning purposes if I ever need. 
Uh, and also, if you're planning to make a mosaic of all the meteors or you're planning to make a time lapse, uh, then make sure you don't move your tripod once you've set it up and framed the image uh, because then, you know, that's going to create a discontinuity once you make a time lapse later. So make sure you carefully choose how you want to frame your image and then leave your tripod there all night after that and don't move it. So if you're using a stationary tripod, you'll be taking a couple of images of the foreground and then you'll be taking a lot of images of the meteors and then you'll be combining both of them so you get a nice bright foreground as well as a nice background with the meteors and the sky. Uh, so for the foreground, um, you, around five images is enough and you'll be taking these ones before the sky gets totally dark. So you still have a little bit of ambient light illuminating the landscape in front of you. Uh, so you can use the following settings for that. You can use uh, an exposure time of 60 seconds or 120 seconds. In my case, I have this intervalometer set up over here. So I've set that to two minutes for the uh, the foreground uh, exposure time. And then also I've set my camera to bulb mode over here so that uh, it's being controlled by the intervalometer. And you can set your ISO to ISO uh, 400. Uh, right here. So set your ISO to fairly low because you want a nice clean image of the foreground. So set that to ISO 400 and then set your focal ratio to the lowest value so you get the most light coming in. In my case, I've set mine to f2.8, uh, which is the lowest that my lens goes to. Yours might go lower or it might stop at f3.5 or f4. Set it to whatever the lowest setting is. And then, uh, yeah, start taking images. And once you've taken about five or so, you can stop the capture. And then you're going to be taking some images of the meteor showers after that. So for the, uh, sorry, of the meteors after that. Uh, so for the meteors, you'll take lots of exposures, as many as you can. Several hours is fine if you want to make a time lapse. And you can start with the following settings and then you can adjust as needed if your sky is too dark or too bright. So I recommend starting uh, with about 15 seconds. So I'm going to set my intervalometer here to 15 seconds. So zero minutes and 15 seconds. So that should make sure that you don't end up getting star trails uh, in your images because if you're not using a tracking mount, uh, if you use a long exposure, the stars might look like streaks instead of sharp stars. So 15 seconds. Uh, ISO, you can increase that up to ISO 6400 on your camera. And again, the focal ratio, f-stop, leave that as low as possible. So in my case, I'll leave it at f2.8. And uh, now you can, uh, yeah, set the number of exposures you want to take. For the number, I've set it to 999, and then it can, it can run all night, and I'll get it started. Now, if you are using a star tracker, uh, then first of all, you'll have to polar align your star tracker. Uh, do this as soon as it starts to get dark. And then, as before, you'll be taking two different kinds of images. One, you'll be taking several images, about five is fine, off the foreground. And you'll do this before it gets completely dark, so you still have a little bit of ambient light left. And uh, for the foreground, you'll use the same settings as before. Um, I recommend about 60 seconds or 120 seconds uh, for individual exposure. So in my case here, I'll set my intervalometer to two minutes and set seconds to zero there. So 120 seconds. I'll set my ISO to a fairly low value to get a nice clean image. I'll set it to ISO 400. And again, my lens is set to the widest aperture possible, which is f2.8. And then I'll take about five images of the foreground. And once that is done, uh, now what you'll want to do is to take images of the background of the sky. Again, don't move your camera at this point. Uh, turn on the star tracker. So now your star tracker will start to track the sky. Now you can capture lots of images of the meteors. So in this case, I recommend increasing the exposure time if you are using a star tracker to something like 30 seconds instead of uh, 15 seconds for anyone not using a tracker. So I'm gonna set 30 seconds on my intervalometer here. There we go. And again, for the number of exposures, I'll set that to 999, so it'll keep on taking exposures until my battery runs out or until the clouds move in 
or until the sky starts getting brighter in the morning. Uh, so, uh, and uh, of course, for the uh, ISO for the meteors, I'll uh, set the ISO to ISO 6400. So that way our sky will look at good brightness. Uh, now, if you find that the sky is still too dark or too bright, you can adjust the ISO to, to uh, you know, make, the, make sure that you can see a decent number of stars. You can maybe see the Milky Way if your skies are dark enough. Uh, you don't want the sky to be overexposed and you don't want it to be completely black. So uh, the settings I listed over here are a good starting point. Yeah, so that should be it. Good luck. And um, after the meteor shower, I'll be posting another video of how to actually process these images and how to stack the foreground and the background and then combine them together to get one really nice image and also to make a time lapse if that's what you want to do. So uh, yeah, clear skies and good luck.